Hello guys, this is Victor here again, aka Vardanian, and today I got a fun tutorial for you in the style of Zoo. Without further ado, let's get straight to it. Vardanian. So in my tutorial series, I cover some of my favorite artists out there, and Zoo is not an exception. This man is an absolute genius, and what fascinates me about his style is that he's able to effortlessly blend in like the vintage style with the more modern disco stuff. I guess that kind of defines uh, new disco as a genre, but I just absolutely love his style. And as you heard in the preview, that's kind of the vibe I was going with. So as always, I'm gonna start out with the drums. Let's see what we have going on. So we got a four on the floor pattern with the kicks and we're just kind of trying to add groove uh, wherever we can. Let's start with the kick. Let's see what we have going on here. It's a nice sound, not as many subby frequencies, but it's emphasizing like the higher frequencies, kind of how like the disco tracks used to do in the past. And I'm doing what I'd usually do with my kicks in terms of processing. I'm making sure that the kick is hitting in mono for the low frequencies. So I'm only taking away everything under 300 hertz. I'm also cleaning it up using EQ. I'm being very surgical about it. So I'm taking away everything under 40 hertz to avoid the low boomy sounds. And then um, as you can see here, I'm boosting the 70 hertz region. And later on, you'll see I'm going to be taking that away from the bass frequency. And I'm just doing some surgical EQ over here. My go-to plugin, Overdrive. What I'm doing here is I'm kind of controlling the sound. I'm adding some drive, but I'm making sure that I'm setting a limiter so that it doesn't go any louder. And that I'm able to have enough headroom to kind of fiddle and make my mix as loud as possible. I'm also adding some retro 80s kind of style reverb. Uh, Valhalla Vintage Verb is my favorite reverb and it's very suitable for this track specifically because I want my reverb to be as colored as possible and this specific plugin does an amazing job at that. Just make sure you're not using too much of it. You see I'm only using 4% and I'm making sure to EQ it out. So I'm doing a low cut and a high cut as well to make sure that the reverb is only hitting where it's supposed to hit. Moving on to my snare sounds. So for this sound, I'm also taking away the lows up until about 100, 115 hertz. And I'm also boosting the high because a lot of the snares, they can sound a little hidden, but with a high shelf like this, we're able to give them more life. Again, I'm using some overdrive and this time I'm actually adding quite a bit of drive to make sure that the snare is hitting hard. And I'm adding reverb, a specifically gated type of reverb. So what gated reverb is, you see the decay is only for 0.3 seconds, which means it hits and then it just goes away really quickly. And gated reverb is very popular on snares because you don't want the tail of the snare's reverb to be too long and then start clashing with other sounds. I'm using a low key clap sound to kind of uh, layer the snare and just provide support and variety. So it's not hitting too often, but it's just there to kind of support the snare. And I'm using some more claps. Um, these ones specifically, I, I'm actually gonna recommend to all the Logic users out there. It's called the Claps and Snaps Performance, and they have the most realistic clap sounds in Logic, and honestly, outside of Logic as well. Uh, there are some third-party plugins that aren't able to provide the type of realism that these ones do. And I've kind of panned them a little left to right. And again, they're not hitting every single time. They're just there to support the main snare. And then I got the hi-hats. It's not really a unique pattern by any means. It's just simple, minimalist. And in terms of processing, I want to make sure to take away all the harsh uh, S frequencies. So I'll just show you what I took away. So that's just taming the hi-hat. I'm also going ahead and identifying some specific frequencies that I didn't like and taking them away. For hi-hats specifically, uh, the region around six to eight K can sound very harsh. So most of the time I'll be sure to tame them as much as I can. And as you can see, my hi-hats and the song overall, I, I tried to keep it as off grid as possible to kind of give it a human touch. You see, the hi-hat would usually hit here if it was quantized, but I chose to kind of make it hit a little later. Here, 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 and kind of all over the track. The same thing applies to the snares. They're kind of all over the place. And the claps, especially, um, 
I like making sure that my claps hit a little before the grid. So as you can see with this example, moving on to the congas. I would usually get a splice loop for my congas, but I was kind of experimenting with like the logic sounds and I used the studio patch and I actually really liked the sound of it. And I was able to come up with a pretty simple, but like nice sounding pattern. And I just decided to go with it. What I did to it is I did a low cut because I don't want this clashing with the kick. I added overdrive to again, control the loudness and make sure that it's hitting hard, but it's not peaking too loud. I added some tremolo which is basically making your stuff move left to right. And I did that so again, it doesn't clash with like the kick because the kick is hitting dead in the middle. So we're just gonna make sure that the congas are kind of hitting left and right. They're not in the same environment as the kick. And kickstart, I'm sure you've seen me use this plugin. I'm telling the congas to duck down every time the kick hits. And that's again a measure to make sure that it doesn't interfere with the kick. And it's also adding some more movement to it. It's kind of making it go up and down. So it's like a little dynamics trick that I use. And then I got the shaker. So for my shakers, I exclusively use loops because I can never make it sound as realistic as a loop would or like a real person playing wood, obviously. And in terms of processing, what I've done for the shaker is I've cut down the very high frequencies because I feel that the shakers can get very annoying at times. I added overdrive, but I'm placing some emphasis on the tone because I'm making sure that again, it's not sounding too harsh and I'm kind of quieting it down and a lot of kickstart because it's going to help me add some movement to the shaker and the shaker won't be taking too much space up in the mix. Then I have the bongos. And they actually match very nicely with the congas because they're both in like the same tribal percussion world. And I don't use the bongos too often. They're only there for like the post-chorus section, but they add a very nice touch and like more variety to the production. And the processing is basically the same as the congas. I'm doing EQ, compression, distortion, overdrive, some tremolo. The tremolo, um, not using the same percentage as the congas so that they don't kind of clash together. Again, using kickstart, but a different amount just to clean up some space in the mix. So this next technique was heavily inspired by Timbaland and how he has this ability to use his voice and his like beatboxing skills to add more to the production. So I'll just play it by itself and you'll kind of figure out what I'm saying and then I'll play it with the drums. I thought this would be a cool little touch to have kind of behind the drums and everything when there is no vocals or anything. That's just my way of paying tribute to one of my favorite producers. All right, let's see what we have going on for the bass. I applied some compression to make sure that I'm controlling the dynamics. So that was actually what the compressor took away. I'm using the Fat Filter Pro Q3 to do some surgical EQing and make sure that everything is in its place. If you do have this plugin, make sure you're utilizing the dynamic EQ as much as possible because it's basically like multiband compression in your EQ and it's just, it makes life really easy. And another Fat Filter plugin, we have the Pro MB and I'm just making sure to tame away all the very low frequencies so that it just doesn't sound heavy and all the trash is kind of out of the way. I'm using a bit crusher, which I basically use on all of my bass processing. And it's just adding some subtle distortion, some high end distortion. I'm using the enveloper to add some more gain in terms of the attack. So I want my bass to be even more stabby than, than it already is. And the logic enveloper is an amazing plugin that helps you do this. So I'll just preview what it does. So let's take it down to zero. So yeah, if you want your stuff to be even more stubby and hit a little harder, 
make sure you use this plugin. You can also do the same with release. So you can kind of cut down the tail if you wanted to, but do be mindful because it's gonna affect your peak levels quite a bit. So make sure you're kind of monitoring that. My way of monitoring that was to put overdrive. It's kind of uh, setting a limit and controlling the dynamics and at the same time adding even more fatness, even more warmness uh, to the bass sound. And last but not least, we have kickstart just to make sure that the bass is not clashing with my kick. So kickstart is basically following the one fourth pattern. That's the same pattern that the kick is hitting in. So basically it's like sidechain compression. Every time the kick hits, the bass ducks. Okay, let's see what we have going on for the synths. The theme of this track was kind of, again, to keep it as retro, but as modern as possible. And here's the loop that the entire song started with. So yeah, a little funky, offbeat, groovy kind of thing. So in terms of the processing, I've used the CLA-76 compressor and I've kind of shied away from like the cleaner compressors, you know, like the Fat Filter Pro C2. And I'm kind of trying to dirt up the sound as much as possible to make it feel a little more analog and warmer and all of those things that like all the retro tracks were basically. I do have to make sure that there's no unwanted activity going on in like the lower frequencies. So I'm taking everything away up until 200 because this synth sound is very stabby. It's very like, it's focused on like all the higher sounds. So we don't really need this stuff right here. And the mids as well, all the, all the mud kind of lives here. So we got to make sure that that's out of the way as well. So this time I'm using the enveloper to uh, reduce the gain because I felt like uh, the synth was a little too stabby and it was kind of giving me trouble with controlling the loudness because it was peaking too loud and then it wasn't giving me enough headroom to in the mix in total. I'm adding overdrive to add some more subtle distortion, quite heavy kick start to make sure that it doesn't interfere with the kick. And basically all of my synth instruments are gonna include kick start, so this is gonna be kind of the norm. Sidechain compression does an incredible job of kind of adding more groove. I mean, obviously your kick is gonna be in front because all the other instruments are gonna duck when the kick hits, but it also has groove, it has movement. Everything is kind of like moving, it's not static. And then uh, in my bus sense, I have a Valhalla Vintage Verb and I have the Waves Age Delay, which is a fantastic delay plugin. Then I have a classic pad that's just layering kind of everything. And I wanna make sure that it's as low key as possible. And here's what it sounds like. Not too much to say about this one. It's just kind of there to fill up the space. So this next sound is probably my favorite one in the entire mix because of how groovy it is. Have a listen to it. So if you do have the Tal you know, Alex plugin, here's the patch right here. And I believe I did fiddle with the settings a little bit, uh, but I just absolutely love the sound. And again, I just made sure to kind of do some surgical EQing. What was important with this track to get a very clean mix, I had to make sure that I was comparing my sounds with each other to make sure that there is no masking going on. And here's the lead. It's kind of the main portion of the chorus. And nothing unusual about the processing. One thing I want to cover is the pedal board, which comes native with the Logic, if you didn't know. And I'm just trying to spice up the sound as much as I can. I'm adding modulation. The wah pedal right here is kind of adding funkiness to it. I just wanted to achieve as much funk as I could with this track. And here's another sound that I use a lot. You're probably thinking, what in the hell is this, right? Well, let me play you without any processing. So that was the original sound. It was a retro synth patch. What I did is I added the Logic ARP to it. And then in addition to that, I just basically took away all the frequencies that there are, only leaving like this range between five to like 12K. And I just added, you know, reverb and delay to it. The reason I love this sound is it's kind of always adding more depth to the production. If you don't pay attention to it, you're never gonna hear it, but your ear subconsciously picks up the sound and it just adds like an additional layer. It's an amazing technique and an amazing filler synth. And right after the chorus, I have two different ARPs layered together. 
Here's what they each sound like. The classic sound of the 80s, the Juno, using this Berlin School ARP, and you know, the, the usual suspects in terms of processing, some EQ, compression, overdrive to control the sound, and kickstart, because I'm gonna use it on every single one of my sounds, and some reverb to make it more atmospheric. I also have this guitar sound, and I know that Zoo absolutely loves his guitar sounds, and have a listen. I love this one too much, man. I absolutely love this one. And it's just adding a lot of feel to it, like that amp, you know, the delay, how wide it is. I actually use this Vitalizer plugin and I use the stereo expander uh, feature. I mean, you can get stereo with uh, in many other ways. This is the one I went with. One more sound that I used is this static string. It's just literally just one note playing. And as always, gotta make sure to use a lot of little effects here and there, whether it's LFO sounds like this one, using risers, and then an impact uh, layered with an LFO, using downlifters. These effects are kind of what's keeping the production moving. It's uh, adding more variety, more interest, because our attention span nowadays is very, very short. So we got to make sure that we're introducing new elements as much as we can so that the listener can catch interest and keep listening to the track. And lastly, another technique that I use on basically all of my songs is adding like atmospheric stuff. I have a vinyl crackle that I always have on my tracks. And since I had um, like a fun little funky disco kind of vibe going on, I wanted to make sure that the listener was either in a room or on the dance floor. I wanted to add this like vibe, like place them in this virtual location basically. And what I did was I added some crowd ambient noise in the background and I panned it hard left and hard right. Obviously during the production, you wanna keep these very, very quiet. You can see I automated them. So in the beginning you can hear them. And then in the end, before the track ends, you can kind of hear them again. But yeah, it's just a cool little technique. And that's all for this track that's inspired by Zoo, The Weeknd, K Trinata, Daft Punk, Dua Lipa. I can keep going on. Um, they're basically all my inspirations in terms of production. And I really appreciate you taking the time to watch it, especially if you've made it this far. Let me know whose style you'd want me to cover in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. All the best. Peace.